ones has been around. I remember having to splash black in Legacy back in the day. It's called 1.5 to play Sabo's decree on their upkeep, which is a six mana answer to goblins because yeah. it is such a, a menace. They used to even play Patriarchs bidding in the same situation. So yeah, I'm with you. I'm nostalgic like that. I like to see these older decks. Who cares about the new cards coming out? I'm gonna throw one or new, two new goblins in there, and I'm gonna keep playing this arcade. I go and gather powerful deck. I go and gather and search for goblins, and if there's nothing from the new set, then I just it's basically Doesn't didn't have it. Right? I'm not <laughs> in the market. Not in the market. That's fine. So, I mean, there is goblin. Uh, there is a, a goblin uh, two one that makes things, something not block for a turn. That could be something, maybe. Possibly. Maybe. You never know. So, uh, Jake, our seventh seed, and Kenny, our eighth seed. About to start the finals of the Star City Games Ooh. Legacy Open here in Minneapolis. We had the last place battlers coming to the top eight, which semi it usually is the case here. First seed always there's always some bad luck for first seed. I see. I always like these uh, kind of struggle to get into the top eight, but then when they got here, it's been pretty definitive victories. It looked like, yeah, especially and from the Goblin player. Both of these players also in the top eight on breakers. This was not a clean cut. Steve Wise. Barely missed out on the spot in the top eight. Actually, his, his breakers were considerably worse than, than Kenny's or Jake's, but still not a clean cut, these two players. A uh, little fortuitous to be here, and yeah. they, they are, made the most of their opportunity. They are definitely making the most of it, and I think Jake has to be careful, and I've been in this situation before where I'm playing against a matchup where I'm super confident against, and sometimes overconfidence can lead to some sloppy play, and the uh, only reason I'm mentioning that is because I'm guilty of it also. Kenny's going to five cards here. I think with, with Jake keeping a seven card hand, Kenny almost has to mulligan for Thalia. He, he can't keep yeah. a normal hand of. I completely agree. It turn has, one vial and, and you know, he, they yeah. can't be. I think without Thalia, he's going to be. I think there's a white card in his hand. I, he might have. I think he may. I, I, he, he has an Arid Mesa. I think it's an Arid Mesa and a Thalia. If They're he holding does, up here for a moment. <clears throat> uh, That's think. fine. I don't want to speculate because I thought there was a ringleader in the last hand. I was I was willing to bet anything on it, and I was dead wrong. So let's just wait till the hand gets zoomed in. <laughs> in fairness, the artwork and border on Goblin Ringleader and Wasteland are very similar. Are they? I, very similar. That, I've made that mistake myself many a time. Hey, you know so. what? One time I accidentally <laughs> paid sixty dollars for a Goblin Ringleader, and I thought it was a Wasteland. <laughs> it's a terrible mistake. I've learned from that mistake now, and I just don't buy red cards anymore. You see the trophy now on the table. A little added pressure. Yeah, definitely. The trophy here has eluded me for a long time. I finally got one of them, and it felt real good because, you know, winning is a lot more fun than losing, I've learned. That is some deep <laughs> philosophical stuff right there. <laughs> you almost needed to get the bleep box ready for my response. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we are on a little delay here. A turn one ponder <laughs> from Jake and Keeps. Uh, three I see on the top. top. He I does think. have Thalia in his hand, I think. Yeah. I've been in, in Kenny's position here before, and it's maybe because my, my opposing Storm opponents always have the best draw, but when my opponent goes turn one undergrass, he pondered and keep, I assume that I am not getting a second turn. No. Tarfire to the face. Wow. Just wouldn't. Just take it. <laughs> Just give him a taste. Shock. <laughs> I love it. Shock you. I'm shocked. <laughs> All right, now that's just that's good. All right, I've uh, seen this before. I just don't even want to watch this. Uh, I don't um, mind it. Do you? Do you like this? Okay, so not bad. At least he got the tire fire in. It means yeah. it makes him slightly more likely to fizzle, I suppose. Yeah. All right. Seventeen. So oh. Sixteen. Fourteen. Thirteen. Twelve. I like Kenny's odds. <laughs> It's going pretty well so far. Kenny is a good sport. He's been a good sport this whole time, and he's got to. He, he's looking around. He's like the the turn one plateau tar fire. You're, you're you got to be a good sport. Kenny and I. I suspect I've never met the man, but I suspect he and I would get along. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Jake is done because he has infinite mana with double lines, I diamond and rituals in yeah. the lotus petal, and he gets simply infernal tutor here and uh, yeah. do it all again with pass and flames. So uh, let's uh, see if he does that. Taxing probe, check out the action. Mog, War Marshal, Wasteland, Thalia, and a Fetchland. Very good five card hand. Couldn't okay. ask for a lot more. Couldn't ask for better. If it, that was on the play, this would have been actually a pretty good game here. All Minus right. Tarfire. All right, game one's done. Um, no fuss, no muss. Let's go ahead and do a game one analysis. 
Thalia is good. Kenny needed to be on the play. Wish he was on the play. That's my, that's, that's my analysis here. I agree with that too. Okay, okay. so uh, back to the booth after roughly 45 seconds of magic. Patrick Sullivan, Shaheen, Sarani, we are in the finals of the Star City Games Legacy Open here in Minneapolis. And our final trivia question, this is for one full year of premium. So we have to make it slightly more challenging. And by that, I mean we have questions that are a one out of 10, and this one's gonna be about a 1.5, let's call okay. it out of 10. In Kenny's 75 cards, there are two non-goblins. Both of them are critical to his chances in this combo matchup. Please give us both of those creatures. I don't want one, I want both of them. Mm -hmm. Tweet that answer to at SEG Live, hashtag SEG Premium, and the winner will be drawn after this match for a full year of premium. Right on, let's do it. Onto the sideboard. Now that I've, I mean, the, now that the the answer is hidden in the question. Okay. We've already discussed Kenny at, at some length. He has a, a couple anti combo cards. He has three pretty powerful options he can bring in in the sideboard. Right. What do you think Jake's going to be up to? Uh, we are going to see four abrupt decay. He needs to kill Thalia, hundred uh, percent. Obviously, abrupt decay is no joke against half the other goblins. Uh, it's no problem killing a, a lackey if he's you know before he smacks you there. So definitely going to see four abrupt decays. Probably the Krakus. The Krakus is an answer to Thalia. It's a freebie like we discussed. And there's many times when I was playing Stoneblade where Krakus made Thalia a non-issue where if Thalia was unchecked, I would be in a, a world of hurt there. So I can see the Krakus coming in as well. Uh, Chain of Vapor, Slaughter Pack, those are decent ones too. Slaughter Pack's another answer to Thalia. That's obviously much cheaper than Abrupt Decay. So maybe not for Abrupt Decay, Maybe a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Again, it really depends on what Jake's willing to sacrifice his maybe. Well, I think uh, you know Jake has the ability to take out his two <coughs> copies of Duress, which feel like pretty close to a free roll to me. Even In Therapy spite, might be a cuttable card too. Well, Therapy, I think you know Jake can have Therapy on the on the draw, even on the first turn, and remove one of the uh, defensive measures that Kenny has that matters. The it, it, value yeah, or if possible, yeah. So I think. Therapy may have some legs, but Duress seems like a free roll. In spite of that first game, I Act, suspect... Ooh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Continue. In spite of the, how that first game played out, I suspect Kenny will be removing Tarfire, which reduces the number of targets that Duress has. Yeah, you know, I, uh, we joked around Tarfire last time, and now I'm going to mention uh, the Shock is not so good against these decks. However, it actually looks like he will be boarding out Therapy because this is a perfect sideboard in and out situation. He can actually bring in all of his removal, and Solder Pack kind of is a free removal for Thalia when you're about to go off. So I suspect to see four Therapy out, two Duress out, in two Slaughter Pack, four Abrupt Decay in, and then adding the Krakus in for one of his basic lands, or one of his other lands, what I would do. Yeah. So uh, a very, very easy swap for Jake. Right. Let's see about the other player here. We're going to see, of course, the uh, card minus in two, question. Minus two Tarfire, minus one Sting Scourger, mm -hmm. plus one Mind Break Trap, <coughs> plus two Aether Sworn Cannonist would be my prediction. I agree. Um, and we're going to bring in, uh, bring us back to the game here. We are already ready to go, it looks like. Already have our draw in our hands. This match is lightning fast. Turn one, what if the hills in the pass? What Jake did felt a little unfair. So we're talking about the good versus evil. So Darth Vader up okay. one game. Well, we got some. All right, well, we brought in our wear right. tears too. Some action here for Kenny. He's got Thalia and Aether Sworn Candidates, a Cavern of Souls to facilitate future goblins, a Krenko, and two copies of wear tear. <coughs> right. Wear tear is a little bit rough here, and especially now that Jake knows about it. I think that. Some of these shatters can have some legs against the versions of ants that have chromox because they often have to play those early to develop right. their mana. But but Jake is basically just on Lotus Pels and Lion's Eye Diamonds. He doesn't need to commit those to the board until the turn where he's preparing to win the game. Right. And again, I mean, we sound like a broken record, but it's, it, honestly, people especially that are just tuning in that haven't heard us all night, when you're boarding with these decks and you're boarding in hate, you can't overload the hate. And this is a perfect example of a little bit of overload here. Obviously, it's not Kenny's fault that he draws both wear and tear in his hand, but when I was playing against Callblade, I'll bring in one disenchant here because drawing two sometimes is just detrimental. Well, I actually don't mind bringing in the wear tears because Kenny, to be quite honest, has so much crap in his deck. He's got three gem palm incinerators, a goblin sharpshooter, three mog war marshals. This is on top of the... The tar I mean, Mog Marshall is kind of whatever. But we, this is on top of the two 
Starfires and the Sting Scourger, which we already right. identified as being unplayable. I'm pretty sure Rest in Pieces is just better than that. I don't know, though. I, I know it shuts down, again, a big portion of his deck. Uh, obviously, we're not bringing in four Rest in Pieces, but he could bring in a couple here, a couple there. We'll see how it goes here. Let's see if uh, Kenny can get to game three here with the... I mean, he's got a good... I mean, if that only puts either Sworn Cannon as his... It's, a, it's hard to argue with that, right? Like, yeah. that's a really good opening, and he's got Krenko to apply some pressure, potentially. I mean, Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd be happy with just the two bears attacking for four every turn at so this he's point. he's going to pay two mana for the Ponder here. Finds Cabal Therapy and, and the, the Krakus. So he does have the Krakus, as Lord. we predicted. Man, Jake just loves to draw that Krakus, doesn't he? It was quite good last round as well. Yeah. I mean, we can't, I, I, I suspect we can't shuffle away this Caracas, even no. if he doesn't want to keep the other two <coughs> cards that are there. Not a chance. That Caracas is a, uh, a godsend for him right now. So he's going to... Kenny here is going to play a dude. He has a matron in his hand. But if he's... Nah, yeah, yeah. I, I like this. This is much yeah. more safe. You definitely don't play anything besides hate cards that are actually relevant at the time. I mean, he knows about, you know... He knows that there's abrupt decays and... And slaughter packs and stuff like that. You can't just lean on this one, Thalia. You need to right. get all your hate into play and then try to apply additional pressure beyond that. Exactly. He did leave the therapy in, so I am wrong. I don't know. I can't assume he left four therapies in. I like, so probably the, like I said, I think therapy is reasonable because he's on the draw and uh, Kenny's best sideboard cards are two minute creatures. Right. So. Obviously, in this situation, it's pretty weak here. Um, he, I th do you think he should have played Delta? I guess he really doesn't want to draw those cards because now he has to pay two. If he plays, if he plays Caracas, he can actually cast that and a cantrip spell. Well, again, Jake's got all the time in the world. He's not under that much pressure here. Oh, so he actually he can... has Slaughter Pack too, so he actually has the answer for both. Thalia yeah, he's got it all. He's, he's got it all rolled so up. He can take his care time. Of. So let's, we're going to hang out for a little bit. Yeah. Then again, when life points are del uh, being deleted from his total here, ad nauseum quickly vanishes as an out, and then he's going to have to bank on the uh, more old-fashioned way to do it. So here comes Therapy. Again, I'm not a big fan, but we'll see what it does here. We'll see if... Uh, well, he knows that Krenko's in there, so that's a freebie to name. Right, he's going to name Krenko. I mean, you, don't, you definitely don't take a risk to name anything else. He knows Double Wear and Terror. The Matron is actually probably a little better than Krenko here, because if he doesn't draw a fourth land, the Matron will guarantee another potent goblin. But Kenny only has one Krenko, so that old pipe dream is done. Ooh, and there's a fourth land. So you get Ringleader here, of course, right? Um, I don't know if he has that much time. He might be better served. It because does. It's a haste or two. It probably will pack more punch than anything he can do. What else? What are the other reasonable options that he has? He can get one of his uh, one of his lords, I guess. I, I don't know. Yeah, sadly, there's two dudes in play. Don't they're the uh, may or may not be the answer. It may for have some to be Ringleader. Here. It may have to be Ringleader because I think Ringleader probably accelerates his clock more than getting a pile driver and winning two full turns to attack. So. Right, right. And Kenny has no idea Krakus is coming because if he did, he might be able to get Pile Driver so he can play Thalia again and Pile Driver, but he doesn't know Krakus is in his future here. Well, he might not be getting another turn because oh. we might just be dead here. Slaughter packing and Krakusing and going about our business. Luckily, um, that's two of his cards in his hand. Then again, I've seen Ad Nauseam against me personally. I'm just going to pass the turn here, I guess. He feels that that matron doesn't really add anything to the board of substance. We're going to sit on our wear and tear here. I guess he can actually, actually, the wear and tear is pretty potent against Lion's Eye Diamond as instant when you're looking there. And because if he plays Lion's Eye Diamond, you can target it and then he can't actually Infernal Tutor. He can't maintain priority while playing it, right? No, he can actually yeah, play yeah, it and yeah. then maintain priority. You can have Lion's Eye Diamond be the second last card he plays. Yeah, yeah, then there's no way to stop it. Yeah. Okay, so Jake, knowing that's in his hand, that's not going to be a situation here. So I think I like the Matron a little better here. Uh, I think... Yeah, I definitely like the Matron here a little bit better. I would be surprised if Jake crack. was not... We know his crack is so... It's, it's like, now, I don't think Kenny was playing around that. I don't think four damage is enough. If he plays the uh, um, Matron against Ringleader, that's two, four, six, seven damage, putting him at three. It, could, it lowers the clock by one full turn. Yeah, but I mean, I think I also probably would have would have played the would have played the Matron there. But I think if Jake has any sort of hand here, it's just going to not matter. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if Jake can. Uh, 
Yeah, I think the first order of business should be to crack a Thalia. Yeah, Krakus is them. just too, no, too cool for school there. The slaughter pack for Aether's Horn Cannon. Yeah, we're, so no. we're rolling here. Oh, that's not... I mean, there's some risk here, right? I mean, that the is, way these set comes. Up. Yeah, I'm going to respond to that Dark Ritual. Man, that was he should have waited on that card, and he is now... Well, I think that he's got a lot left over. Right, I, I mean, mean it's, it's a, not like he's dead, but that's definitely a, an error there. What's, he, what's the third card in his side? He has a Cabal Therapy, and a Frontal Tutor, and a Duress. And the problem with Ant and like Jake playing this deck, he's so comfortable with it that everything's just fluid, and he does it a certain way. And sometimes when you're just going through the motions, which you have to do with a deck like this, you go, oh, rats. I remember he has a shatter in his hand. Now I'm in trouble. Yeah, now Jake is really thinking. Now you can tell that he stuck a you know a stick in the the peg there. That stopped his uh his wheels from moving. Yeah, you know, if he could keep that lion's eye diamond, this would have been a pretty easy pass on flames kill. But now he has to go off through ad nauseum, which is uh, much more challenging. Right. That's magic. There's a. Such a small thing, order of cards played, that can make you go from an easy win to a much more, at least, he's going to fight for this win. I mean, Jake's still in a great position here. I, I, he can still well, yeah, I see Cabal a Ritual, he can Duress, uh, Empty Hand Infernal Tutor with a ton of mana floating and go get Ad Nauseam. Of course, there's some, you know, dangerous draws that he has in his deck. He can hit the, he can hit the Pass in Flames. Tendrils. Well, Tendrils is not bad. As a just, last card, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's some risk yeah. that that could be... In the sequence, but... Yeah. All right, well, Jake is... You can't get yourself frustrated. You can't think, you know... And a lot of times you'll sit there and mull over the mistake. Just get back to the game. Look down. Make sure you can uh, produce a lot of mana here with a uh, pa uh, Pass and Flames kill here. Let's well, the problem is that he can't float red anymore. That's the, that's oh, the yeah, big yeah, issue. Yeah. He doesn't have access to red yeah, mana. Sorry, so. I'm thinking about the lines I've done. So now, yeah, he's going to have just to... Do it the old-fashioned way. Go get Ad Nauseam and then go that way. Yeah. Ad Nauseam's not going to be that bad here, too, because he just honestly needs... Oh, he's... Is that Duress? All right. He left Duress in. Is he just passing he the turn passed now? turn, yeah. Jake. Probably a little frustrated here. And stop the game because he didn't pay for Slaughter Pact. Yep, that is it. So I, I, I must. Yeah, yeah so okay. Slaughter Pact has been a funny rule. There's, it is auto loss. Uh, we uh, are going to go to game three. We are going to a third game now. We're going to game three. Well, that's. I mean, it's more exciting this way anyway, right? Uh -huh. Now yeah. now we still have the possibility for a first turn kill. Jake, perhaps a, a little bit of tension under the camera. He, <laughs> 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 he looks at the camera, shakes his head. Uh, there's really not much discussion to be had about the end of that game. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about game three. Um, we have Jake knows about all the hate. He knew it was coming anyway. He knew Thalia was coming in. Or staying in. He knew that uh, Aether Swarm Candace is coming in, so he boarded appropriately with Slaughter Pact. Didn't see a lot of abrupt decays. Therapy was a little unimpressive. Duress is really, really bad against this deck. I can't imagine him leaving Duress in. Yeah, I still like Therapy. Uh, probably not a, a full four of them. Right. It's a little excessive. Definitely better than Duress, you'd have to agree. All right, well, That's you, a hard you're going to be naming Aether Swarm Candace and yeah. Thalia. Those are the two cards he cares the most about. Yeah. So we'll see if he. Yeah, I don't see him re sideboarding. Duress has to come out of that deck. So. Yeah, I, I don't think my, I don't think there's going to be a lot in, a, in the way that the sideboards get modified here. Right. I think I like Jake's setup. I mean, in spite of you know the, some of the twists and turns that that particular game had, I think. Right. Uh, he's very well set up, especially on the play, because you know Jake has a full two turns. Of no disruption, with the exception of the one mind break trap as a possibility. Right, 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 right. And if he if he did it right, the way we discussed, when he plays a lines eye diamond last before, right, well, second to last before the infernal tutor, he's able to dodge the shatter effects. Because that would be the only reason I see duress in there. 
to, to right. take out the shatter effects, but again, they don't do anything. Yeah, they, they really don't do anything. It's, it's really corner case scenarios where Jake needs to commit his lines eye down into the table. You're seeing both players take a mulligan here. It has to be some weird corner case scenario where Valley is in play and he needs to get lines eye diamond in play to go off the following turn through. Right. I mean, we're we're talking less than one percent of games. This sort of stuff is going to be coming up. Absolutely so. right. So again, Jake, maybe uh, should uh, splash a little bit of water in his face. Relax. Like, I mean, I mean like, you know, so everyone. Pay, uh, we've all forgotten a pact or two, right? I've never. I don't think I've ever cast a pack. Oh, oh well, if you would have, you might have forgotten once. You ever played four red packs in an angel's grace or stuff? No, I never went down that road. Oh, okay. Well, Kenji, if Kenji was Kenny here, then he would have let Jake take it back and uh, pay for pact. Uh, he's infamous for uh, kind gestures, but here, this is serious business. There's a trophy to be had yeah. here. We are out for blood. Goblins do not forgive, right? They do not, and, and they, they do not forget. They do not forgive or forget. They are bloody. They're mm. actually pretty forgetful, actually. Oh, yeah, you're but right. But you, you know the expression. It's just, dumb, that's all. You know, where you're painted in the corner here. <laughs> so, Jake, looking at a six-card hand, and he's going to keep. All right. Yeah, let's go ahead and get rolling here. Oh. Lotus Petal Ponder. I mean, if he's doing that, that means that he doesn't have land. So finding those two lands on top has got to be... So that's basically, essentially a mulligan to, to five here, which he was willing to do. That means the rest of his hand should be pretty good, right? I mean, it's a fair keep if the last bit of your cards are the necessary pegs in your machine, right? Yeah. All right, so he shuffles. Remember, he's got, with the exception... There's one mind break trap, and he's got a full two turn window to do whatever he wants before Kenny can provide any degree of disruption. I've seen this deck kill with five cards on turn two before. Fally off the top for Kenny. He had a hand, I don't believe, with any of his white creatures, so that's a huge draw. But yeah, uh, he's a lot of times a, a goblin player will see Mountain Lackey, and the rest is irrelevant a lot of times. But here, Kenny adding Thalia to the team, and he's going to name Thalia 100%. And An like assassin. you said, yeah, it worked very well. And the rest of his hand is pretty weak here. Yeah, I mean, he's got a good The curve, matron but... is going to obviously come into play off the lackey the next turn, and then get something even better, and then probably Cranko, and then Cranko will come off that. Well, he can go. I mean, I, I think that the most reasonable sequence there is lackey attacks. Put in War Chief cast matron. Yeah, that's better. I would, I would, no, I would put in. Is that better than matron put in pile driver? I think so because you uh, you can do that the next turn, right? You can just put. Well, if you put in War Chief, he only has to pay two for matron. He can just cast the matron, and the next turn he can play pile driver with haste and attack. Sure. Right. So he he, he missed a small opportunity here. He's doing it this way. The only difference is he's going to have to pay the full price for uh, War Chief next turn instead of paying one mana for Polygon. All right, so here's the test now. I mean, Kenny's going to have a pretty substantial clock here. The only way this is going to bite Kenny is if he draws another Goblin that is two mana or three mana or less because he would have been able to maybe attack for, not lethal, but make it real close to dead here and he oh, oh man oh, 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 oh god oh. bless america oh. all right so he has one turn to win uh if you guys at home you can't see but patrick's getting pretty excited about oh. this goblin and attacking and red things happening and uh there's a chain of vapor in uh jake's hand here to fend off a little bit but i don't think that shortens the clock at all again he can you can't target the pile driver no, and if he was going to use it, he should have used it pre-combat to stop pile driver damage. Here we go. He's backing up, yeah. Rewind, friend. Slow your roll. I have blue cards to use here, and he brought in Chain of Vapor. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, it's another answer to Canonist or Thalia. I, I think Abrupt Decay would probably be, be, you know, he has six outs to that. Again, we talked about the, uh, the weighing the odds. What do I board out? What do I keep in? Can I afford to board out two more preordains? Can I afford to board out? A ritual? I don't think so. All right, here we go. I mean, it looks like two cards. dark rituals. Dark ritual, dark ritual. So if that he draws an infernal tutor, that would probably be the best. No, actually, the best draw is ad nauseum. Ringleader, ringleader bricks. All right, here we go. I mean, best draw here is ad nauseum. 
even at 12 life, he can still go off because he has the red mana to be able to do it again with passive players. So he's going to need to draw. All right, hand up. Ad nauseum here. That's oh, we got I like a redraw. <laughs> nope. Nope. All right, right we got a shuffle. Shuffle. Has to be ad nauseum. And then we, we're we still not out of the clear, no, no. too. Then yeah. we actually need to play magic. If it's not ad nauseum, there's no more magic to be had. The goblin player will upset the ant player. We have Luke Skywalker beating Darth Vader for a little nerd reference. Not saying Jake's a bad man, but he's playing a bad man deck, so... Come on, Goblins. Here we go. Another redraw. This one is not going to be beneficial. Now he's going to have no mana for his ad nauseum, so it's going to be even rough, more rough. But he didn't play his land for turn, so just kidding. So he can still, he has to hit ad nauseum here. There's no other card in Magic besides Sabo's Decree. That would have been pretty good, right? Yeah, Sabo's Decree. Yeah, name Goblins, game's over. Ritual and the Engineer Plague would not be bad here either. <laughs> that wouldn't be too shabby. He would just die to... No, actually, he'd be fine. I'm going to bring back Salva's Decree because I'm sure this Goblin Victory, All if right. he does win. More redraws. All right. Passing Flames. No. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's Mike. it. We have Kenny Dungar winning with Goblins over Ant. Red guys. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay, we're looking at two more off that ponder there. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. That wasn't the shuffle yeah, off the ponder. Like that's why we all paused and we were like, no. Okay, so, all right, more redraws. We're not. Lion's Eye Diamond. Right. Now you're done. All right, now. Well, not yet. We get the shuffle. And we get the hit. <laughs> <laughs> once, once more with feeling. They're all looking at us like, I'm sorry. We're going we're gonna to get this. Uh, well, let's tighten this ship up, okay? Let's uh, let's make sure we're ready to sail here. All right. Let's see if he... Once more with feeling, Jake. Let's see if he's able to do it. I like to run a tight ship over here, so let's uh, let's see if we can and get a game is. going. Slaughter pack. Uh, all right, well, we can not... There it is. That's it. Kenny all right. Dungar. Victor. Victor Your Champion. StarCityGames.com Legacy Open Minneapolis Champion. Congratulations to him and to Jay Shu also. Congratulations. I mean, obviously that, that second game was a, a little sloppy there and possibly a better path could have been pursued, but second place finish very, very nice. And, Nothing uh, to shake a stick at. And Kenny Dungar, the eighth seed, having to draw first in every match he's playing around the el elimination rounds. Hard to win that tournament under any circumstances, especially in Legacy, where you know the die roll matters more than you know more than modern, more than standard, and so big congratulations to him. Yeah, uh, impressive. Goblins winning a Legacy event. Not to say Goblins is a weak deck in any sense, but it's impressive because you have to beat these combo decks that are just engineered. Another pun there. Engineered to defeat Goblins, right? Sometimes the world can be a good and decent place. We forget <laughs> that. We forget that from time to time. With right, all the, right. the pain and suffering and injustice uh -huh. that happens. There is still times where you can walk into a room with four cavern of souls.